Welcome to Community VOD Review. Today we have Durapothecare on control playing AR. And if you would like to join Community VOD Review, please feel free to join the Discord in the description below and paste your gameplay and Community VOD channel right here. And we'll go ahead and review that every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Diamond Flames versus Crimson Flames. This is going to be a sweaty one. I'm really excited. And uh, let's get into it. All right, boom, look at that kill feed. We got three dead, we're gonna be missing one. And based on our teammates positioning, these enemies are gonna be flying out of middle. Yes, exactly, and the right lane. So once we get that kill, you should look towards the right. Our teammate's pushing up. And right now, we're actually getting into something very interesting where our teammate is basically capturing B, holding the B push through. We have one teammate pushing up the right lane, force spawning all the enemies in their back. And that's gonna basically influence them to hit middle and then try to go B. Uh, so Right here, you maintaining this power position and just controlling all of middle is a great play. Your job is just to stay here, try to slay out, and once we get another, you know, two to three dead, you can go A. Um, of course, if our teammate does go B, and then uh, our teammates die at B, and you haven't got any kind of, you know, um, influence or anyone going middle, then you can wrap over here and try to help your teammates on B. Uh, but right now, this is beautiful positioning, great kills. There's you looking for those middle kills again. Like we said, those guys are going to be pushing out. And just like that, we got three dead. So now we're deciding to hop on A. This is perfect. We got four dead. We're hopping on A. Our teammates are safe. And look at that. I love the pop-ups. If you guys want to follow him on YouTube, he's just got spawn guides and everything. He's teaching the game. And unfortunately, we lose that gunfight right there. In the future, when you have a player top middle, if he gets control of this and you're sitting right here, this is usually a moment where you can then wrap around and then get control of this entire right lane. And then what you and your teammate at bar have is you guys have a cross to kill all these enemies trying to get to your teammate on A, right? So they're all over here trying to get to your teammate on A, trying to get to your teammate on A. And when you get those kills, three dead, that's where then finally you just hop on point, boom, capture, GG's, right? Um, instead, all we're doing is we're just, you know, going into a, you know, predictable spot, uh, where ideally we just want to win the gunfight, um, and hopefully we don't die to Peeker's advantage. What you're doing right here is totally fine. Don't worry about it. It's just, that's the second time we've died. So it's kind of like, uh, we don't want to do the same thing twice if we died the same way, right? Um, really unfortunate just cause that's Peeker's advantage. It's Call of Duty. Uh, usually you would win, uh, you holding a pre-aim. But good job picking up the push through on the middle lane. Of course, uh, there is still a player on time. So like once this player leaves off time, you 100% now know that he's probably inside your middle building. And if he's inside your middle building, um, you wanna start looking over there, right? And you could have simply wrapped back over here. So let's just talk about this real quick. We were three to four dead. We know one enemy pushed up into our middle building and we actually don't know if an enemy pushed up on our right side. And then, of course, we don't have any map control. So, like, right now, you're forced to cover, like, three different things. I just want to say, next time in the future, when you're sitting right here, boom, you get a kill. Keep holding that pre-aim. Once the enemy hops off of A, then go for this uh, flank over here or go for this reposition over here. Because then you can clear out this right lane by using your grenades. And then this will guarantee that this, this enemy is in the middle building and you can just play for him, right? Um, by either, you know, trying to open the doors, an ego challenge, or you can simply just run past him, uh, get a two piece, and then he'll try to flank you and you'll kill him. Mid, uh, uh, so unfortunate, again, like that's just a lot of pressure right there. We don't know if you're gonna die from your right. We don't know if you're gonna die uh, right in front of you. And that's just a general rule for everyone playing right now. Um, when you hop on Modern Warfare 3 for the very first time and you've never played these mappies, uh, maps before, all you got to do is stick to the outside and go in a full circle around the map, just like that. And the whole reason why is because your back is always safe and all you got to usually do is focus on what's in front of you, right? Um, so that's a very important strategy that a lot of people should follow, uh, especially these AR players when you're first playing uh, because uh, it's just going to keep you safe and uh, ideally killing these players trying to push up into our base all right um we definitely want to start using more nades right there just use more nades to clear out sections of the map make sure someone's not sitting in a corner make sure someone's not you know laying behind uh, tr uh like couches or something 
Uh, but at this point, you guys were slaying them out so freaking hard. This was an easy round win. Um, so, yeah, good round win right there. Dude, yeah, dude, slaying it out against these Crimsons. Holy crap. <laughs> um, let's see how defense goes. Nice. All right, good collapse on A right there. And again, unfortunately, we don't have a stun grenade, uh, but in the future, if you did have a stun grenade, you pop open these doors and then you'd watch that cross while the enemies are trying to go B. Perfect. Um, either way, good job looking for this trade top. This is a little bit sketchy, so it worked. All right. You went for a sketchy play and it worked. That's just one of those 50-50s that you got to go for. Um, and damn, you got the three piece, but... They still captured it. Either way, good three piece because now we know that three of them are off spawn and only one enemy should be in our base hypothetically. If uh we got if we didn't get all four dead. Um good job right here, by the way, just picking up that missing lane. Uh this is a very important tip for everyone here right now. When you first spawn up, if you're last person that just spawned up and you see your teammates looking middle, holding, you know, top bar. And then holding the left lane, we're missing one very important thing, and that's our push through B and our full flank. So always pick up flank, right? Usually the last person alive, last or sorry, last person that spawned up is the last person to pick up flank. And you can either you know sit off your spawn and try to hold these enemies, or you can do what Apothecary is doing right now, and he's just pushing up, getting a little aggressive, and uh, it looks like he may be relying on audio EQ. Uh, but essentially, once he see once he doesn't see anyone here, he would then look behind him, um, and that's just a great job on him picking up that right lane and making sure these enemies don't get through and uh, flank. Now, of course, there could be bad timing where an enemy got back elevator, but for the most part, we're doing very solid. Again, last person to spawn up. He was look, looking for flank, and then ideally, once our two teammates died, he wants to try to look for those guys in our flank, and then once our two teammates spawn up, they would then look for the guy flank. Good kills. We got two dead. And we kind of just, like, need to create a line. Um, we're getting very aggressive, which is nice, but we're getting aggressive with ARs. Usually, your sub players would, like, be in their face, you know, in secret, bottom B, in their base. Just causing a nuisance um but uh if these ars are working for us then it let's keep them working for us now uh to prevent us from ever like dying uh from bottom vending like you very well could create a line where you guys are holding all lanes right where you can have a player top bar holding middle you can have another player top bar obviously holding middle and sound whoring bottom bar and then this player over here at a I would prefer him to be on like the back steps looking towards the back. Um, actually, let me take that back. Let me take that back. This player is watching the B cross and then you could then have a player uh, like sitting on B holding the entire right lane. And there's a key player in here that's very important to keep notice of and that's this middle player. This middle player is calling out a cross. So if any of these enemies are spawning over here and they try to wrap back, this yellow line is going to see that wrap back and he's going to be able to call out his teammate to turn around and then focus that kill right there. So this is actually a really dirty setup right now that could very well just help us throughout uh, the entire game where we're force spawning them in this top right spawn the entire time and we're keeping them spawn trapped. They can't exit at all. And even when they try to wrap back around, we're here to uh, get the cross and give a call out. So... I don't know if this is what you guys are doing on purpose. Uh, if you, I don't know if you guys talked over this, but this is a really nice right here. Really, really nice. Um, yeah, amazing job. And again, just a beautiful job picking up uh, that right lane. And dude, you that sucks. You died to that guy like three times in a row the same exact way. He just jumps around, gets a headshot multiplier on you, and it's just GG's. That is so unfortunate. Um, I'm not sure what you could do to fix that other than maybe the second that you see him start spamming jump button So maybe your uh, jump will make him miss some bullets, uh, but that's just unfortunate again It's kind of like just Call of Duty being Call of Duty 
Secret, secret. Oh my gosh. Over backstage, over backstage. That is just so unfortunate. Unlucky. Yeah, maybe that's the one difference is add in a jump afterwards. But okay, either way, good job, everyone just holding pre-aims and just slaying out these Crimsons. Ideally, we should go up 3-0, but we still got a full eight minutes left of the game. So I'm interested to see what happens. Oh, uh, what the heck? The game's not going. For oh, I kept going backwards. I thought I was going forward. My apologies, everyone. Good mm -hmm. No, no, no. All A, all A. All right. Good call out. So you made a team call out saying, hey, guys, let's just go all A. That's a very big, important tip that I focused on yesterday in my last live stream. Uh, solo Tuesday, every Tuesday at 12 p.m. PST. Uh, we went over how the number one tip in Call of Duty is communication. Just simply calling things for your team will help you win those rounds. And all it does is it allows some coordination for your team to win trades with everyone. Simple as that. Uh, beautiful call out right here saying, hey guys, let's just all go A. And just having that coordination will usually help us win gunfights. But right there, we got hard countered. Now, the reason why we got hard countered is because we already went full A on the very first round. So very well, these enemies sat there and said, these guys are going to go full A all over again. And uh, maybe they that's all they did was they just simply hard countered you. And that happens again, right? Just happens. Gotcha. Another player top bar. All right. This is another important thing that actually made me lose uh, a match yesterday, I believe, where if there's a player in a power position, they're going to prevent you from allowing you to soak up any time or, you know, get up into an actual good position to capture B point. So that person in that power position is your number one threat. You basically want to send a, you know, two players to go hunt him down and kill him. Um, and those two players you would send is a sub player and an AR player. The AR player would pre-aim, hold over the sub player. The sub player would push up, try to, you know, win the gunfight. And even if he loses it, ideally the AR player wins the trade and they're dead. Um, maybe we can see an instant of that happening here. Again, we're all kind of like holding pre-aims, looking for this guy in our base. This is good. But it would be a situation like, oh my gosh, that was so lucky. Good win right there. Good win right there. Um, so this is what I was talking about. Like, let's say that player was still top bar. Um, what you would want to do is you would have your AR player basically pre-aiming over top bar while your submachine gun player is pushing up and trying to clear it out, right? And then you then would have like maybe an AR player and a sub player working over here doing the exact same thing on the left. Where there's an AR player over here on the left, you have a sub player pushing up, and we're just clearing out our entire uh, like front bar, front B. And if we win these gunfights, usually the last place where you might expect an enemy is uh, camping over here, blocking the A spawns, and then he might go for a flank. And that's usually when you want to look out for that player right there. Yeah, it's a great day. But great win right there. Unfortunate team nade. And again, it's like we're team nading. Um, like, again, like we wouldn't get team nated right there if our first goal was to clear out our top bar, our bottom bar. And this Zuby guy is now on like a seven streak at this point. Uh, he's actually on a five streak. Uh, he's just slaying out way too much. But finally, we get four dead. And what this four dead, um, we just need to hold these lanes. So again, like right here, we got to kind of like pay attention to our mini map a little bit. Understand that our teammates coming over here to pick up our middle. So all we need to do is just turn around and then hold our left push, right? Simple play like that. Ideally, we would uh, we would win a gunfight. Um, yeah, we're getting naded right here. Unfortunately, no uh, trophy systems. Good trade off right there. Oh, beautiful three piece. Yo, I might as well just shut up and let you do you, right? <laughs> Um, no, that was a great play, um, especially just picking up on that read that, hey, our teammate died middle, they're behind us middle, you get that beautiful three-piece, and unfortunately, uh, our teammates just can't hold our middle, and like that's our biggest downside throughout this entire round is a lack of presence middle. Uh, the enemies just keep getting control of it nonstop, and we're getting slayed out just based off of that one kid, Zuby. Um, so with down to, uh, down to lives... Again, we keep dying the same way. Really annoying how we keep dying that way. Uh, we really want to look at that. So, like, let's look at that, right? Because you died this way, like, five times in a row, Dura Apothecary. 
So like, let's just see if you jump. Right, so you got stunned. You're, you're going to die right there because you got stunned. But I would say in the future, when you're laying down, um, immediately... Oh, no. It, the game didn't pause. But basically, when you're laying down and you see the enemy, immediately start spamming jump, jump up. And the whole point of it is hopefully he misses bullets, he doesn't get headshots, and you kill him. All right, we just got to win defense. Last time, you guys completely obliterated them. Uh, but we kind of lack, again, submachine gun presence. We do have one sub, which is good. Um, yeah, no, we have one sub, which is good. I don't know why I mentioned that. Sorry about that. I, I was more so uh, still thinking about the last round on, damn, we need control middle. Uh, but on defense right here, you guys are playing this perfect again. You guys are kind of like ending up being in the same lanes as well it looks like you love going bottom vending and holding that right lane that's where you're most comfortable and that's what you look for when you're actually joining a team so if anyone's wondering uh when you're joining a team what you're ideally looking for is a set team of four where everyone knows the ultimate game plan on how to win the game and then you just place those players on where they feel most comfortable, right? Such as we always need a player pushing up A, blocking A spawns, so we can spawn trap them at B. Usually that player, you know, you want whoever's most comfortable to do that role. Same thing with the player who's always up in the enemy's faces, popping two pieces, three pieces, always get the most comfortable player to play right there in that position. All right, but again, Looks like right here we could fight for B, but as a team, as a unit, you guys are calling out to just give up B. Um, right there, that's that's all I just mean. It's like right there you kind of had like a pointless death because your teammates weren't pushing with you. Uh, but regardless, good job trying to see at least maybe you can get a pick or two, right? All right, good. We got three dead. And right here, looking at our minimap, all of our teammates are just basically fighting middle, fighting A. So you can get a huge opportunity to push up middle and potentially get into the spawn trap position or just essentially sit top bar, hold top bar, and then when you hear the enemy's bottom bar, you can play for them. And right there, that's what I was talking about, where when you run across straight uh, straight across bar, uh, you'll be able to kill that guy from top bar. Um, and then who knows, just based on your positioning top bar, right? So like, let's think about that. So this play, it was fine. You pushed up middle, you get a two-piece, it works, right? But what if you pushed up bar, you sat right here, you didn't see anything, and then you hear, oh, two pushing bottom uh, bar out to A. And then there's also that guy middle who kills you, right? So maybe just by you sitting in this one position up here, you have all the power. You have high ground, you have an AR, you simply have the defense position where you just need to pre-aim and wait for them to push you uh that's a great spot you know that would might have got you that three piece that one spot might have got you in that three piece um but either way i like the aggression middle <laughs> not a total bad play at all all right, 1311. I like that we're pushing up this right lane, making sure no one's pushing through. Zuby always pushing through. Dang. All right. You need to send Zuby that uh, you need to send Zuby a DM and say, "Yo, we need to practice 1v1s." <laughs> Just so you guys can 1v1 back and forth and uh ideally learn how to, you know, destroy him. Uh because that's like the only guy shutting you down. Um and it might be because the MP7 I just realized right now he killed you with an MP7. MP7 might just be super overpowered. <laughs> All right, we're playing this just cool, calm, collected. As an AR player, usually AR players have um, trophy systems, but you know, if two of your ARs have trophies and then one sub has dead silence and you run dead silence, that's totally fine. Again, as long as it's all talked through. And either way, great job playing your life right there because that allowed your teammate to get that two-piece and we just got to contest. Oh my gosh, that got scary. All right, 2v1, <laughs> let's go. Bro, you completely fried right them, them right there and destroyed them, bro. Great game. The Diamonds win against the Crimsons. Look at that. Beautiful gameplay. Some very important things in that gameplay, such as you know, when the enemy's in a power position, we gotta get them out of that, or else we're gonna end up losing the round. Such as we just had to maintain middle um, on that offense that we lost. Um, 
remember to ideally look at your mini map and just fill in the right lanes just to help each other's teammates. Um, and uh, that's actually what we saw a lot in here was these guys are just in these beautiful setups where we're holding everything. It was insane. Again, if anyone would like to follow Durapothecare, it's, uh, you can follow him at Durapothecare7 on YouTube. And here's his Twitch, Durapothecare7. And uh, that was a great game. Thank you so much for that. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.